Let's look at how to use the first law of thermodynamics for adiabatic processes. Adiabatic processes are those where there is no heat transferred across the boundary of the system. So we can start right out by saying that Q equals zero in these processes. The first law tells us that the change in internal energy depends on the heat transferred and the work done in this system, for the process rather, but Q is equal to zero in this case, and so we can simplify a little bit and say that uh, DU is equal to the change in work, which is equal to negative P dV by definition. DU, though, we know is equal to NCV dt. So this leaves us with the relationship NCV dt equals negative PdV. So there's a lot going on. We can't make a lot of substitutions here, or rather we can't do the integrals directly. We can, however, use the ideal gas law, which tells us that PV equals nRT. So we can make a substitution for P, which equals nRT, divided by V. So we're going to plug this in over here, and we end up with NCVDT equals negative nRT over V dV. If we do a little bit of rearranging, we end up with CV over T dT equals negative R over V dV. Now we're going to integrate both sides of this equation And when we do that, we are going to end up with CV times ln of T2 over T1 equals R, oops, R times ln of V1 over V2 and my negative sign went away because I changed uh, the numer numerator and denominator of this V. Now we can simplify a little bit further by getting rid of the natural logs so that we have this relationship between the initial and final temperatures uh, in the system. say to the CV equals V1 over V2 to the power R and we can simplify one more step and end up with the expression T2 over T1 so this is the final temperature of the system divided by the initial temperature of the system is related to V1 over V2 to the power R divided by CV. So if we know three of these things, let's say we know the initial and final temperature and the initial volume, we can find the final volume. It might not be always that you know the two temperatures and one of the volumes, uh, although you can always find but there are also re relationships between the pressures and volumes in an adiabatic process. So the ratio of pressures is related to the ratio of volumes. So this is CP divided by CV. And if you have temperatures and pressures that you're working with, the relationship between those is given in this way. 
A more detailed derivation of these two equations can be found in the Gaskell textbook. So for an adiabatic process in terms of the first law, we have no heat transfer by definition. We have that delta U is equal to N C V delta T if C V is constant, which it is for ideal gas processes. And then we know that the work done is equal to the change in internal energy. So if you're faced with an adiabatic process and a sort of first law problem, the main thing that you need to do is to identify the initial and final temperatures in the process so that you can make a calculation for delta U and for W.